Hello traders, in this video I will cover a topic uh, where how can you use certain keywords in order to allow certain sets to be dependent on another set. So let's assume you want a strategy wherein you have let's say two sets, set 1 and set 2 and your logic is that your set 2 should take a trade only after your set 1 has exited. Um, so so in, in essence it sounds very simple but um, but let's say if you have more than four sets or more than five sets, it becomes a little challenging because there are n number of possibilities that could happen uh, in, in real life uh, wherein any set could take a trade and you, you want basically one set to be dependent on each other. So I'll just show you uh, on two sets how it works and you can extrapolate this onto multiple sets. All right. So in order to achieve my logic, what I will do is I will first make two variables use, uh, called S1 and S2. Similarly, you can make multiple variables for each set. So let's say if you have five sets, it could be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 and so on. Okay. Now, initially what I will do is using the initiate variable, I will assign my S1 as a value of 1. Okay. And I will assign my S2 as a, val uh, a variable S2 as a value of 1. If it is value of 1, this means that um, my, my entry has not yet taken place in, uh, in either S1 or either S2. All right. Now, once my entry has taken place, I will use the runtime variable feature to change my value of S2 to let's say number 2. So, if my entry happens in set 2, in that case, the variable uh, S, uh, S2 will be changed to number 2. And if my exit happens, then I will change the value to number 3. So, this way, I can check for the status of any set in any other set. So uh, let's assume I want uh, I want my set one to trade only after set two has uh, has taken an exit. So in order to achieve this logic, I will first initialize my variables. By the way, I have uh, I have certain other videos wherein I have shown how to uh, how to initialize variables as well uh, and how to use the runtime variable feature. I would suggest you have a look at it if you haven't already. I'll link it in the description also. So I will first initialize my variable as s1 and make sure these are uh, Make sure you uh, use uh, capitals and spaces correctly out here because these are case and space sensitive uh, uh, places. Um, so I'll select S1 and I'll select the number as 1 and I will add it. Now I'll select S2 and I will again assign the same number 2 to it. Uh, sorry, number 1 to it. After doing this, I'll click on save. So this way I have now initialized my variables. So uh, S1 and S2 have been initialized as number 1 and 1. All right. Now when my trade happens, wherein when my entry happens, I'll select runtime variable and I will change the value of S1 to something like number 2. And I'll click on save. Similarly, when my exit happens, in my exit, I'll go to my runtime variable and I will again change the value of S1 to number 3. By doing this, I have now established a rule. The rule is that if my S1 has not taken an entry, then it will always stay number 1. If it has taken an entry, then it will get changed to number 2. And if it has taken an entry and after that it has taken an exit, then it will be number 3. So do, by doing this, I can now uh, use a keyword in my uh, in my uh, set 2 entry called get runtime. So when I select get runtime, I'll put my variable uh, name. So I'll select S1 because I want to check the status of S1 and I'll select equal to now, if I need uh, S1 to have not taken place, then I'll select number 1. So this means that S1 has never really taken a trade. Uh, this is what it will uh, signify. So now, my, uh, provided all my other conditions are true, uh, my set 2 will only take a trade if my set 1 has not taken a trade. Now, let's say if I change it to number 2. This means that my set uh, set uh, uh, set 1 is currently running which means it's already uh, taken its entry and now it's checking the exit conditions. So this way you can make sure that uh, set 2 is in entered uh, has, has already taken a trade. Similarly if I change it to 3, 3 means that it has uh, it has taken an entry and the set exit has already been triggered. So if the other conditions are true 
and uh, and the set one has exited only then your uh, your next uh, trade will be possible similarly you can uh, you can also uh, you can also check the status of your own set so let's say if i uh, use another get run time i can select let's say s2 and i can select equal to number and i'll select 1 so this means that my set 2 has never taken a trade so the current set that i am in this has never taken a trade but my set 1 has taken an entry it has uh, and the set exit has been executed similarly you can uh, you can make it as complex as you like so let's say if you have multiple sets so you can uh, you can devise a logic using s3 uh, s4 and so on wherein you have let's say um, a condition where uh, set 1 has taken an uh, has uh, has taken an entry but set 2 has not taken an entry and set 3 has basically taken an entry and taken an exit only then your set 4 will be triggered provided you add the runtime variables in all the sets so using these keywords uh, you can play around with the get runtime and numbers in order to uh, get creative and you can make complex logics uh, using this uh, this particular uh, 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 code so um, i hope this helped you if you have any more questions or any more suggestions about stuff that we can do um, uh, as videos you can feel free to uh, drop us and uh, drop us an email at support@ratetron.tech and i would request you to uh, subscribe to this channel and like our videos because this really helps us a lot thank you very much have a nice day